Hello and welcome to Kinesiology Chris. I am Chris, and today we're going to be talking about the scalenes. So if you look at this doohickey to my left here, the O's for origin, I's for insertion, A's for action, and N's for innervation. Click at any time to jump around to the corresponding portion of the video to go ahead and start that part. Otherwise, you can just hang with me and me with you, and we can have a party and see this thing through. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. All right, the scalenes. Before we begin, let's uh, talk about what the hell we're looking at. We got a front view to the left and a side view to the right. This is to give you two different perspectives on what the hell's going on. All right? So let's put some landmarks on these bones. We need uh, C1 through C7, first and second rib, and the clavicles. You'll notice the clavicles are only on the left side. That's to show you that the uh, scalenes run underneath it. Nothing more, nothing less. All right, so let's plop the scalenes on there. Uh, if you look at the right view, you can kind of see that the scalenes is divided up into three uh, sections. You got the anterior, the middle, and the posterior. The uh, posterior lies in the back, anterior lies in the front, and guess which muscle lies in the middle? <laughs> Good job. If you look to the left on the front view, you can also see that the muscle fans out and gets wider as you go back. So the name scalenes is Greek for uneven. How do I know that? Because some dude I know that speaks Greek told me that means uneven. So now that you know what you're looking at, let's go ahead and talk about where the scalenes originate from. Every scalene, the anterior, middle, or posterior, all originate from the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. Whoa, that's a big word. See that like spiny looking thing on the side of the, the neck bone? That's a transverse process. Scalenes all attached to that. All right, so let's talk about the anterior scalene first. It originates from the C3 all the way down to the C6. From there, we'll go to the middle scalene, and that's going to originate from C2 to C7. And now we're going to talk about the posterior scalene. That goes from C4 to C6. I know, I know that was kind of fast, and I was switching muscles on you, so we're going to slow it down. If you already know this and you want to skip ahead, just press one of these doohickey button things, and I'll skip you ahead. All right, so the anterior scalene originates from C3, 4, five and six the middle scalene is going to go from c2 three four five six and seven and now the posterior scalene is going to go from c4 five and six now personally if you want to try to remember this i just recommend trying to remember a combination code 36 27 46 is what i like to do it's like a phone number. If you just remember it, sometimes it sticks with you forever. Just make that phone number for the scalenes. Dial it every day. 36 27 46. And you'll never forget it again. All right. Maybe you can come up with your own way to remember. Maybe you can use letters, a set of numbers. Like, you know, for C3, you're going to use the third letter in the alphabet, which is going to be C. And for the 6, you'll do whatever that is. I don't feel like saying my ABCs. Anyways, we're going to move on to insertions. So, uh, see you there. Okay, so let's talk insertions. The anterior scalene is going to connect to the first rib. The middle scalene is also going to connect to the first rib. The posterior scalene, however, is going to connect to the first and second rib. As you can see, it's pretty easy. I don't think there's any need to review that. If you want to look at it again, just rewind. We're going to move on to action now. Okay, so let's talk about the action of the scalenes. As you know, it's divided up into three parts. You got the anterior, the middle, and the posterior. Each muscle can do its own thing, or they can sometimes join forces and do the same thing. All right, anterior scalenes up first. Let's take a look at the action. If you look at the origin up there, and you look at the insertion down there, and you make an imaginary line, that's going to give you your line of pull. If you take a look at this link, you'll learn more about line of pull. So looking at the line of pull of the anterior scalene, we can see more torque will be produced in a sagittal plane on a frontal axis, aka the side view. And that's why a muscle contraction produces flexion of the head. So let's talk about the middle scalene. The origin is on the cervical spine and the insertion is on the first rib. If you look at the imaginary line of pull for the middle scalene, you can see more torque will be produced in a frontal plane on a sagittal axis, aka the front view. The middle scalene has two actions we'll be talking about. First action, it assists in elevating the first rib during force inspiration. <laughs> the 
This is known by some to be reversal of muscle action. If you want to know more about it, check out the link in the description box below. For the middle scaling second action, it partners up with the posterior scaling to produce lateral flexion of the neck. So speaking of the middle scaling's partner in crime, we just saw that the posterior scaling's first action is lateral flexion of the neck to the same side. So what do I mean by lateral flexion of the neck to the same side? Well, if the left muscles contract, the neck goes left. If the right muscles contract, the neck goes right. If we take a look at the posterior scaling's origins, and we take a look at the insertions, that'll give us our line of pull. As you can see, that line of pull looks very similar to the middle scaling's line of pull. However, the insertion of the second rib of the posterior scaling makes the second action of the posterior scaling elevation of the second rib during forced inspiration. That concludes the action portion of the video. But before we move on, let's go ahead and do a quick review. The anterior scaling's action is flexion of the head. The middle scaling's actions our lateral flexion of the neck to the same side and elevation of the first rib during force inspiration. The action of the posterior scaling is lateral flexion of the neck to the same side and elevation of the second rib during forced inspiration. Let's go ahead and move on to nerves. Okay, so the innervation of the scalenes runs from the spinal nervous system. It runs from C3 to C8. C3 to C8 of the spinal nervous system. Now, it's important to note that my references and sources may not be the same as yours. So if you're watching this video to take a test for school, please be advised to check your sources to make sure everything matches up correctly. In fact, if you were to Google scaling's innervation, you'd probably come up with five different answers on five different links. Anyways, I'm Kinesiology Chris. I hope you liked the video on the scalings. Until next time, happy studying, my friends.